Hello everybody and welcome to the very 56th episode of Cooldown Timer. My name is Nifu and with me today I am joined by Zingles, Artman, and Victorium. And from the frozen wastelands of Alaska, <sighs> Mark Hamilton. Hiya! And speaking of frozen, my goodness, uh, it's, it's been very cold up here. Proper Alaska winter hit at the beginning of this week, which means... You know, it's, it's what Alaska's famous for, is uh, being a cold, miserable place. Yeah, which means <laughs> on Monday it, it was zero degrees most of also, the day. Also moose. And it, and it just got colder <laughs> from there. Yesterday it was minus seven was the high, I think. And, uh, the high, nice. Yeah, and on my lunch breaks, I uh, I walk two blocks to a nearby Barnes and Noble because it gets me out of the out of the office. And uh, it took a lot of dedication this week. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just freaking cold. And here I had an epiphany, which is why I'm talking about this. Uh, today, by the time I came home, it was about 14 degrees out. Fahrenheit. <laughs> All this Fahrenheit. For, for our European listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, dude. Um, here's the thing. I step out of this car because I got a ride uh, with, with my in-laws and I had to walk a block to get to the apartment. And I step outside and I'm like, wow, it's so warm. <laughs> I don't even need to you put on gloves. You know you're from Alaska, when? No, seriously, I was practically skipping. I'm like, it's so nice out today. <laughs> It's a balmy yeah, no, 14 degrees. <laughs> we we had storms and like half the state is out of power right now. Ugh. Glad it's not your half. Yep. I did want to say though, uh, even though I was practically skipping and I'm like, it feels really nice. Not warm, but comfortable. I could wear a t-shirt. Uh, I honestly felt that. But at the end of about three minutes of walking, my fingers were numb. And, uh, and I was reminded... That the body has limits. <laughs> That's what Alaskan winter does to you. It treats you to respect it by wearing gloves. <laughs> well, that's what the uh, Alaskan winter does to you. But, Zam, could you tell us a little more about what the nuclear winter does to you? Because we've you've been spending a little more time with Fallout over the last week. It makes me feel like a child again. Like, uh, I, was, I was thinking about this... The other day and I'm like there I don't know what what exactly it is about this game um but there's something about it that that just makes me feel like a kid again like like no game has done in a very long time mm -hmm. <laughs> and that that just makes me happy um but um uh, yeah I've just been a, I, I I finished the main story and I've been experimenting a little bit more with the uh with the settlement building which honestly like it you know, I think we said this a little bit last week, but it really could be a game to itself. <laughs> and I keep discovering more stuff you can do. Like, my shops have been making money, and the money shows up in one of my, like, um, uh, chests, basically. And it's just like, I go in there, I'm like, oh, I got 2,000 caps in here. <laughs> I didn't put these here. <laughs> I um, guess that's uh, what they call business. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I really enjoyed about the the main story on this one is how they incorporate the different factions into it. Like everybody as they're playing through the main story has, you know, a certain amount that they all play that's fairly similar. But then it gets to a point where it breaks off and depending upon which faction you align with, you get a totally different series of final missions yeah i thought that was really interesting because um now one of the one of my kind of problems well i guess i don't know 100 percent if it's a problem yet but <laughs> um is that like in in skyrim for instance or oblivion any of the elder scrolls games you have like several kind of main ish story you know you got the main story and then like in Skyrim, you had like the civil war story and you had each of the guild stories you know mm -hmm. and so those were big quest chains and there were lots of them and i really liked like always feeling like um i wasn't done with it you know like like yeah. there was there was always another quest chain that i could do with my character if i wanted to um and whereas like i i i have been staying away from like wikis and stuff because i i want to 
I want upon stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I want I want all of my discoveries in this game to be my discoveries. Um, um, I don't, I haven't found any other big quest chains. I mean, there's, there's lots of quests and I mean, I guess I haven't looked, I was talking to a coworker and apparently there's at least a whole nother city I haven't found yet. Like full on city, um, which is also one of the cool things about the fallout series is, you know, the the cities are (laughs) few and far between and they always have lots (laughs) of really interesting personalities. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I, I've just been, um, I, I've been kind of keeping an eye out for another big quest chain because I, I, I like having one even if I'm not like, if you know, I, not like <clears throat> devoting all of my time to you know doing that quest chain or whatever. I don't know, and I, I don't know either direction, but it, from what I've played, it doesn't feel like it's gonna be that way. Like it feels like it's gonna be, like, you, you, you pick which faction you're gonna commit with. Yeah. With each character. I mean, you can play through most of the factions quests, uh, but there's just a point where you just there you got to choose which one you're going to align with. Yeah. Uh, I chose to the, then finish that one all the way through. I, I chose the uh, Brotherhood of Steel because uh, they are because cool. they had an airship and they had an <laughs> airship. Um, and the the moment that they get introduced is like one of my favorite moments in the game, dude. It's, in freaking video game history, that was so freaking <laughs> awesome! Oh my yeah, gosh, it, that that gave me like legitimate like just chills when I saw that. It's it's one of those moments that like I mean they don't force you to look at anything, but they set it up so that the exit to one of the main quest areas looks out over this area where it is arriving from. And it's it's like surrounded by all these little what are they called Velocichopters or whatever. Velocichopters. <laughs> the back of Velocichopter. <laughs> no, Velocichopter is the best word I've ever heard. It should be a band. <laughs> Velocichopter. I, I just saw Jurassic World the other day, so I got dinosaurs on the brain. Velocichopter. That's just wonderful. I'm imagining dinosaurs flying around. <laughs> oh no, they got Velocichopters. No, it's a freaking it's a Velociraptor with like uh with like a propeller on its back. <laughs> yeah, it just it's chops Velocich- things with it. It's a chopter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't actually fly, it just chops things. Uh no, they're called vertebrates. <laughs> <laughs> that was close, right? Velociraptors were the predecessor to birds, right? 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 You're off by a few million years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a That's whole That's canon right there. There's a whole bunch of vertebrates flying around the uh found the the Pridwin <laughs> as it's called. And then uh and they have like these searchlights going on and over these loudspeakers they're like citizens of the commonwealth, do not be alarmed. And it's like and like this epic music starts playing and it's just like, "Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting tingles and and I'm enlisting." <laughs> well, you know, I got to say uh this the Brotherhood of Steel always kind of struck me as, as as being a bit jerkish. Yes, they are. They are a bit. Okay. Zam's character is going to well, try fair. to change them. Yeah. That's never going to happen. They're made of steel, philosophically. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> no, I, okay, well, now that would be giving away too many spoilers. But, yeah, okay, no spoilers. Okay. Avoid spoilers. Speaking of spoilers for an older game, um... Did either of you ever play all the way through Fallout New Vegas? Uh, no, I actually didn't. I didn't get very far okay. in it at all, actually. Because that game if, also had a faction system, right? Oh, very much so. It, uh, yeah, it was heavily. And it really went very well. But there's a bit where um, if you're working for certain factions, um, uh, they want you to destroy this Brotherhood of Steel base. Don't do that. They're cool. And it's really hard because they're super paranoid, you know. Um, but it was... It was really funny because the first time I ever did that quest, it was really, really hard. I ended up just having to kill everybody one uh-huh. by one, which was really friggin' hard because it's the Brotherhood of friggin' Steel. Yeah, they, they, uh, <laughs> power armor, uh, really good energy weapons. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but I just had this other character and she wasn't really that good at fighting. And, um, basically, they put an explosive collar on you and make you do some quests before they'll trust. Uh, you inside of their base 
And so they finally, they just let me in the base for the first time, take off my collar, and, like, the elder's like, I want to see you in my office, you know? And it's like, okay, go find the elder's office. Uh, he's like, I, I got missions for you, and whatever. I just wander around until I find a computer room, and I'm like, oh, it's the self-destruct computer. And my character's got ridiculous science, so I just go, click, 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 click. Activate self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's freaking out, and I put on a stealth boy, and I just run. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, and I did it, and it was hilarious and fun. I remember in uh, <clears throat> in 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 Fallout Three, which is the Fallout game that I played the most of. Um, there there wasn't a whole lot in the way of, um, or no, I'm sorry, let me take that. I'm, my brain's going there. Uh, I I did not like the Brotherhood of Steel. I mean, like I was like, oh, laser weapons and power did armor. You, did you play their expansion quests? Um, I, I think it had like, it involved time travel or something. I think, I think I started it. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, but they, they just, they, again, they came across as very dickish and, and they I was are. like, yeah. In, in this one though, they don't, I mean, they do, but it's not as bad. They still uh, believe they're the only ones allowed to have advanced technology. Um, they believe that if anyone else has advanced technology, they'll blow up the world again. <laughs> Which, to be fair, they probably <laughs> will. <laughs> like they, I think they the make... problem in Fallout Three is they were very tight into the main quest. Yeah, and I mostly just ignored them though because I didn't do the main quest. Yeah, as we uh, talked about last yeah. time. You know? Um. I, I don't know. I, I found them a little bit more. And, like, again, Fallout is, is one of those games where it's just like, yeah, guess what? Everyone's really the bad guy. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I found I found the Brotherhood a little bit more. Um, Civilized? Yeah. Like, they're just a little bit. They're a little bit more easier to understand. You're like, okay, I get you. You're preserving all this dangerous technology. Yeah, and you're and keeping you, and, it away from bad guys, and and you know, like like they they do have some like extreme views that my me and my character don't agree with, but you know, it's like, it's like, well, they're they might have extreme views, but in the end, they they really do want to help the people of the the area, and they protect them from you know everything out there, and and and, and including themselves, even if that's not necessarily. You know, the best thing, but they don't—they yeah. don't hurt—they don't hurt humans unless you know. Yeah, they do though, if they have advanced technology. <laughs> well, they—they they <laughs> don't. In, that they, they somehow it. got a hold of when it belongs to the Brotherhood of Steel. They—they <laughs> they have it in four, uh, like like all of the all of the missions where they're just like ah go do work for the Brotherhood kind of stuff. It's all like all right, there's a bunch of super mutants here. Super mutants are bad. <laughs> Kill they super are. mutants. Yeah, exactly. Does that so, make me a racist? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that they are they're they're very racist, but they're, they're bad racist. Folks. They're, they're racist mutants. against things that are really bad. <laughs> it, yeah, it is true that they are very kind of they're just a very real faction, and that yeah, they they have done in some of the games some pretty horrible stuff, but they always did it for what they felt was a good reason, and arguably was a good reason. Maybe yeah. And not and, like, and, not and like feel, a bad good reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I feel like in, in this one that comes across more so than in like three. Because like I said, I like I, I, I loved them in three just because I was, I was like, oh, people with knights and stuff. But they're like, oh, power armor and lasers. Oh. But then then I was like, but I, I don't like these guys. I want to yeah. like them. Hell, I want to love them, but I don't like them. <laughs> And in New Vegas, like I said, they put a bomb collar on my character. And yeah. Stuff. But and uh, like that just doesn't sound like like this Brotherhood of Steel from Four. It just doesn't to, really sound like something they would to do. To be fair, New Vegas, they got badly beaten in a bite, fight with the NCR, trying to prevent the NCR from getting a hold of a solar collector plant, um, because they're the mm -hmm. Brotherhood of Steel. <laughs> And so they're, so they're down we, to just one mentioned. underground base in the whole Mojave. So there's kind of like you could say, well, they got their backs against the wall. They're kind of paranoid. 
while in Fallout 4 they have an airship and a bunch of velocichopters. You know? <laughs> so they can probably feel a little looser, you know, that they don't have the to The cover so... for this episode is going to be a velocichopter. I don't care what any of you say. <laughs> they don't have to be so, you know, put bomb collars well, on people's necks. Well, and the other thing is that these guys uh, are the same brotherhood from 3. Like, they, they traveled from the Capital Wasteland to um, uh, to the Commonwealth. And, uh, a bit closer than the Mojave. <laughs> yeah, and they, they mention, like, specific events from Fallout 3. Um, and so... Remember that time that <laughs> Three Dog three said dog. something? Also, speaking of Three Dog, so uh, the, we, I think we mentioned last week that the, the radio guy, Travis... Um, so dead in my game. Uh... We weren't a huge fan. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's a bit of a wet blanket. Um, I have grown to really like him. <laughs> I mean, he's he's no he's no three dogs, but um, which again, I I like three dog. I don't care what any of you, any of you say. He was he was cool. He was good in my book. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've I've grown to grown to like him a little bit. <laughs> well, I don't think we can spend the whole podcast. No, I was about to say Fallout again, uh, but I do want to say that um. Another nice podcast out there, the the Diecast, which um, is affiliated with the Spoiler Warning Crew. Um, they're generally known for being huge curmudgeons and nitpicking everything, and and being very picky, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. About games. And they loved Fallout. Uh, they gen, <laughs> they generally like uh, Fallout Four. Yeah. Uh, the most curmudgeonly of them, Seamus said that the very first part of the game where it's like. You kill a death claw while wearing power armor. Yeah, he said he hated that. Why? He thought it was. He thought it was stupid. You don't even know what anything is, and it's like, well, now you have power armor and you're fighting a death claw. But then he said everything after that won him over. He really liked. Oh, it. I thought that scene was awesome. He thought it was stupid, <laughs> which doesn't mean it's not awesome. I befriended a death claw. Really? Yeah, yeah. I did too. Is that those things are terrifying? Well, you. You do something you... that makes it happy. <laughs> um, that murder? sounded really dirty. <laughs> Just imagine you murdering indiscriminately, and it's like, yes, it's please. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not. Brian, it's not like it, it's not like super intelligently happy or like um, friendly. Like, oh, this person is my friend. It's like you did something. I I know you did something for me. I'm I, not gonna kill I'm you. I'm not now. gonna murder you, but leave. <laughs> I'll be honest. I said that the Brotherhood is. Steals a bit too extreme, but I would found a society dedicated to killing all death claws. I would do that. Yeah, and so well, but here's the thing. Also, in this in the, in this ecosystem, the death claws play a part. What? How would might the that part possibly of murdering? Everything. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean that in what is it? What Yellowstone or something? They they had killed like all of the wolves in Yellowstone. And they started reintroducing them back in, and because of how they influenced the ecosystem, like rivers started changing because of how <laughs> the sun shined brighter. Well, no, it was like <laughs> flowers grew. It was be- because of what the wolves did to affect the ecosystem. Affected something that affected something that affected something that affected something that affected the rivers. All right, I'll tell you one that I'll, made a I'll, butterfly I'll, in China I, flap its wings. I will post the video that talks about that with this I will episode. So check rebut. out the links. I will rebut with one simple statement, and that is death claws eat people. Yeah. So we are their there, prey. There and I don't think the buffalo were too wolves, happy. Velocichopters and death claws. <laughs> I um, hope this never dies. Alright, let's on. move. Let's move. Where on. the hell is my phone? Oh, there it is. Continue. <laughs> Velocichopters and death claws. Mo- moving on, there's a neat game out. It's called Hard West. It came out, yeah, it came out on November 18th, and uh, I don't know much about it. None of us have played it, but it's the the pitch is that it's XCOM in the Wild West, and there might With be demons. demons and things. That sounds so awesome. Like, I might stop playing Fallout for five minutes. No, no, no never mm. mind. <laughs> well, you know, it's on sale through November 25th, 20% off, fifteen ninety nine on like Steam. Six. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, 
It says I actually love that I idea. I mean, XCOM, <laughs> they that that tactical turn-based combat, you don't get much of that. Especially much of that. That's good. That's quality. Yeah, well, did, yeah. Okay. I, you gotta say that part I, because there've been quite a few copycats I, I over don't, the last two. Years. I don't know if I if I told this to you guys, but I think I think that up until Fallout Four, that was my perfect game. XCOM. Yeah. Yeah. Like not like it, it's not my favorite game. I just think that for what it was and what it wanted to be, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's just really fun. Yeah. It's really compelling mechanics, good story, and that's really all there is to say about it. It's and good. so let's stop talking uh, about and, it. No, and I'm if, <laughs> if well, if if I had to pick a setting to put XCOM style tactical turn based combat, it in, would be I Fallout. I could not have come up with a better one than the Wild West. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Right? <laughs> and I'm looking at this. Yeah. You got gunslingers. They got a ricochet system where you can bounce your bullets off metal objects. Oh, jeez. Which is unrealistic, but sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, apparently there's some supernatural stuff in there, too. Uh, it's kind of vague about the supernatural bit. I do see a screenshot where someone's standing in a flaming pentagram. Yeah, I think I saw that oh too. My. And I think it implies that maybe you can bring characters back to life using magic. Hmm. Huh. I don't know. Huh. But it looks like it looks interesting. Uh I I uh something we might want to look at later, maybe. I Yeah, I'm kinda definitely sold. That sounds really I had not heard of this actually. <laughs> no. well, it nobody me heard about it until today our recording day, to the best of my understanding. It wasn't Nobody oh, had been okay. talking it's about not, it. Until it certainly today. didn't have a big uh, advertising budget. Looks more indie. I'm not sure who made it. Um, yeah, neither am I. But it came out yesterday. Uh, it's <laughs> gotten really good reviews. It's made by Gambitious Digital Entertainment. It's like Ambitious and okay. Gambit combined. <laughs> Gambit. An Almost ambitious like a... Gambit. Yeah. Velocichopter. <laughs> okay, if we ever make a gaming company, we gotta name it Velocichopter. <laughs> if we ever make a spin-off podcast, it'll be called Velocichopter. Uh, um, but yeah, looks good. That's all we really had yeah. to say about it. So, uh, Don Bluth uh, is a beloved animator. You may recall his most famous work, such as The Land Before Time. The, s- the first one. The Secrets of Nim. Or it's the Secret hated that Singular movie. of Nim. Hey, that is a great movie. No, I'm kidding. I, I like That's that movie. Is he the An American big tale? Allig- big lipped alligator yep. moment guy? All dogs <laughs> like, go to heaven. He, he made the movie that had that yes. in it? Those are all classics. He also made some pretty crummy movies, <laughs> such as The Pebble <laughs> and the Penguin, which was a favorite of mine when I was I like. I remember seven. that one. Um, but is objectively terrible. Um, Troll in Central Park. Others we don't need to also name. Also terrible. But he Titan A he was ama- was I I enjoyed it. It wasn't amazing, but I know. really liked. Titan I was a. grounded when we had that. <laughs> oh, and he made Anastasia. He he's made a lot of beloved films. And uh, man, the villain in Anastasia was freaking terrifying. I liked him. He was funny. Uh, he was great, but he was uh, he fell apart. That is frightening. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and arguably, You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Arguably, his successful animated movies uh, may—you can argue that they spurned Disney on to up their game, bringing about mm-hmm. the Disney Renaissance with such titles as Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, that sort of thing. He's—he's uh, he's a big deal. Uh, but he, Titan A.E. was his last movie, and that came out when. I don't know. I was oh, still a kid or something. Oh, one? Oh, three? Hey. 99. I'm feeling 99. It's been a long time. Or 2000. It was, it was definitely in the 2000s. I'm Googling. Googling. Yeah, 2000. The year 2000. So for 15 years, he has been silent in terms of uh, making movies. Um, and in those 15 years, traditional animation is, is uh, not around as much. You know, and I miss it because it traditional animation yeah. is beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. Uh, it's one. I've got nothing against three D mo- CGI movies. No, me neither. I used to, but then Pixar happened, and <laughs> they're just so dang good. Well, and, and, and yeah, well, just the quality of kids' movies in general, I feel like has 
gone up yeah. a lot recently. But uh, oh, I saw the Peabody and Mr. Sherman I one. Didn't... No, Mr. Peabody and Sherman one the other day. That was terrible. That movie was just Did you expect it to terrible. be really good, though? No, it was just <laughs> on in the background, and I just ended up sitting through, and it was like, this, is, this story is just horrible. Okay, well, there was some big news a little while ago um, where uh, he showed up again with a Kickstarter to make drag... Oh! Yeah! Kickstarter my heart again. <laughs> to make go away dragon's lair <laughs> the movie now if you don't know dragon's lair was an arcade game he helped make where the game itself basically looked like a high budget animated film it is In like quotation playing, marks it is like playing cocaine like yeah it is it is a, it is an experience it's an experience <laughs> that's all i have to say <laughs> um but sam was, did you it, did you play it with arrow helpers on or with oh the yeah lock. yeah kind of i feel like it'd be impossible though. to play without the arrow helpers i played it with arrow helpers too really the I game also played... mechanically is just uh to do the left thing, right up down go a direction but it's at it's the right time a non-stop die. barrage of just just constant utter chaos <laughs> but it looks really good uh and i don't think there's ever been a video game quite like it I thought the Banner Saga might be a little for like better it. or for worse. <laughs> but uh, wasn't there Dragon's Lair too? I don't know, but there was Space Ace, which was another game by him that was basically Dragon's Lair but sci-fi. People have been kind of wanting a Dragon's Lair movie, and he came out of the woodwork and said, "All right, here's a Kickstarter. We're gonna raise uh, five hundred fifty thousand dollars with that." And what I like about him is he's very realistic. He didn't say we're gonna make. The Dragon's Lair movie. No, he said with that we can make a 12-minute segment <laughs> that we can then shop around to publishers because something like this would cost, like, millions of dollars yeah. to make. Right. traditional animation is ridiculously expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he, he has some... All his stuff has just freaking beautiful art. It It is. It's hand-drawn, you know? I know. And you don't see that anymore. Because it's ridiculously expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess he's mostly been doing theater now, and he is terrifically old. He is. Uh, you, if you go to the Kickstarter and watch the video, he is very old. And when I saw how I want old you to know, he, every time you say Kickstarter, I want to sing that song. And <laughs> when I saw how old he was, I'm like, oh, that's why he hasn't done anything since Titan A. Not, not because he gave up, but he's legitimately old. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You gotta stop at some point, right? The sad news is, well, as we're recording right now, on the 19th, there are six days to go, and he only has $207,000 out of his $550,000 goal, so he probably isn't gonna make it, and that's yeah. sad. That makes me sad, guys. <laughs> Don't be sad. You gotta accentuate the positive, <laughs> eliminate the negative. Lock on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In Between. It's just. Again, you gotta bring that. joy <laughs> up to the maximum. Okay. <laughs> bring gloom down to a minimum. I just feel bad because it's like, I genuinely like Don Bluth. I think he's. What he's done is incredible. And he kind of went out on a low note, you know? A bunch of bombs. Anastasia, which was basically Disney. He, he was basic. It didn't feel like a Don Bluth film, you know. No, it felt, it felt like it felt like a Disney movie. I know, and Don Bluth films always felt different. You would never mistake Land Before Time for a Disney movie. Oh God, no! <laughs> or a kids movie. <laughs> <laughs> it had lots of chapters in it. Um, and then Titan A.E. was so inventive. It's like nothing anyone else was doing. But again, yeah, it was not exactly an epic didn't make a lot of money and that was his last movie and that felt like such a bad note for such an important person to come to go out on you know and then now to come back after 15 years to put a kickstarter together and to not even get half your goal i bet he'll get half his goal before the six days are up but that's maybe he can make a six second film that's not good right. enough <laughs> and it's like Jeez, it's got it's got to hurt to put yourself back out there. 
Yeah. And not get it. Now, admittedly, half a million dollars, that's a lot. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, still, again, I, the, feel, I feel Well, sorry. you know, on the up- upside, though, a lot of time with crowdfunding, it's towards the end of the project that they get that big flood of stuff. Uh, I well, know, but the problem they're is still not halfway there. There, and you usually is a have lot. to hit. Well, to the best of what I've heard, is if you haven't hit halfway by yeah, halfway, like is a there's lot. A, there's a certain point within the the campaign. If you haven't hit halfway by that point, you're more likely than not not going to succeed. Uh, yeah, but at first you don't succeed, you fail. It's it's I just feel sad because those were some really good movies. Even the movies that generally weren't um, that good in his uh, in his collection of movies he made, I still liked like Rockadoodle. You remember that movie? I never saw that one. Weird I flick. I did see it, but I it sounds really weird. weird. What's really sad is I've never seen All Dogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> I, I'd like to say something completely off subject. Completely off subject. That's fine. Um. I recently killed a uh, legendary mole rat, um, and it dropped a legendary rocket launcher and 30 rockets. What was he doing with all those rockets? (laughs) Where was he hiding the rocket launcher? What was this mole rat? Sometimes has money and sometimes swords That's exactly what ran through my head when I saw it. (laughs) That's Don Bluth. That's sad. Wish him... I hope he doesn't take it too hard, you know, because maybe, maybe he's, maybe, maybe I'm reading too much, maybe of myself into it. I know I'd feel bad. Maybe, yeah. maybe he doesn't really care. And we are, and longtime listeners of the show will remember a couple weeks back when you poured your heart out to us. And oh yeah, know. I did. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> uh, apparently I'm not a longtime listener of the show because that knows. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to monopolize the podcast. No, Zam but, already did that earlier. But you guys. What? Uh, but but if I may, there was something else this made me think of that I think you guys would have opinions on. I don't have, have opinions. opinions sometimes. Have you heard <laughs> that? I'll just say it. Disney uh, put out a little. I don't know if it was a news release. Someone from Disney, in a position to know, said that they. Uh, that Disney wants to release a new Star Wars every year indefinitely. Uh, I heard that, and... It makes me sad a little bit. Well... <laughs> Apparently I do have opinions. I, You're right. <laughs> Elaborate. Don't Elaborate. worry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accentuate <laughs> the positive here and say that some of them will probably be good. <laughs> I... Okay. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to this, just like there are with, you know just about everything but i like the idea of there being more star wars movies and there being star wars movies that can explore other areas of star wars not just the you know main stuff kotor movie oh god Uh, please that would be amazing (laughs) so i mean uh, the more the more they do the, the the better chances that something slightly based off of kotor might exist or they might just think that it's you know eu so it's tossed they out, do so. say they're gonna hop around a bit like, <laughs> and uh if they're actually gonna pump out one movie a year and disney's got the well, money to do I, it i don't know i'm, I'm really uh, interested in watching they rogue certainly one have room. like i'm no like i mean i, I there there would obviously be like like the the, the 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 big pro of that is obviously like holy crap, new Star Wars every year. There are so many cool things that we don't know anything about that they could do with that. Or we knew side, things about, but now we don't anymore. Yeah, on the, but on the flip side, obviously, it's, oh, new Star Wars every year. The chance of utter crap just skyrocketed. And I'm worried about Star Wars fatigue. No, uh, and that, I totally get that. The movies well, it, it's, could all be good, but... It could definitely... I don't see how it couldn't reach the point where it's like, oh, are you going to see the new Star Wars movie this year? Oh, maybe. Yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it shouldn't I mean, be like that. It's seven so far. <laughs> it, it, it shouldn't be like that, though, because, I mean, that is one of those things where I've, I've never seen people as excited about a movie. And I, it will die quickly. Like, I mean, they're, yeah, they're going to be excited about it for December. And then it's just going to be... I mean, you, you need space. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Get it? 
Because Star Wars? Yeah. yeah. You gotta have yeah. space Think in about Star that. Wars. Or it ain't Star Wars. <laughs> you gotta have wars in space to have Star Wars. You guys get my joke? Yes. <laughs> no, I totally get that. And that's something that I am also a bit concerned about. However, as long as there's not 10 movies a year. 10? Good God. <laughs> no. Sam, that's a legitimate thing. Count how many superhero movies we get out a year nowadays, and we'll get by 2020. You know, that's a good There's point. going to be like 10 superhero movies a year. That, you're exaggerating, but the point you're making is I'm true. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, there's I will not go, 10. There's not go, 10, okay. though. I talk can for see a second. six, and talk that's for a, a second. Lot. Talk for a second. <laughs> okay, I'll we are talk talking. For a while we are look currently up. communicating. You know, the more I think about, it, the less worried I am. I'm still worried about it, but I'm a little less worried because I'm thinking, well, you know what? If uh, if they hop around a bit with like different subjects, mm-hmm. then it's no big deal. And also, remember back when Lord of the Rings came out, and they came out one after another every year, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was still a hype, like but, crazy. But it wasn't indefinite. There were three movies. That's we true. all knew there were going to be three movies. If they did a you series like that, that would be fine with me. That is that is the crux of it. Because when I read this headline, and it's like, a new Star Wars every year. When Just at that point, I'm like, huh? And then it says, indefinitely. That's mm-hmm. when my heart's like, oh, is that a good thing? That doesn't sound like a good thing. Stories have to end at some point. <laughs> So, if they just treat Star Wars like a setting, that's not necessarily bad. You know, if we see different characters. But the thing is, like, we'll start to get crappy, crappy Star Wars movies. Yeah, but on the other hand, if they are coming out one of, you know, Star Wars can survive bad movies. It's it been has proven. Survived bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we still love Star Wars. And the more I think about it, the more I'm excited for an inevitable, like, uh, like bounty hunter movie, or just Star Wars criminal underbelly movie. Well, I mean, what they've talked about and 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 potential for a uh, what you call it? Um, I forgot. Uh, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Yeah. Yeah, See, that would be cool, and like an old Republic movie would be really cool. Um, Yeah, I guess so. I, cool. Dude, I freaking love the Old Republic. It, it is what it is. There were vibro swords <laughs> and lots of Jedi. Yeah, I guess so. You know, and they got there's a lot to work with with Star Wars. It's a space opera. There's literally there's literally there's thousands a whole galaxy of galaxy that you can just do pretty much anything you want with as long as Tatooine's in it for some reason. <laughs> and let me think here. This. <laughs> Yeah, every single Star Wars movie. Wait. Maybe not The Empire Strikes Back, but I think every single Star Wars movie has Tatooine in it. <laughs> Except The Empire Strikes Back, because I can't think okay, of Tatooine. Okay, I in was that one. exaggerating just a tiny bit. Okay. 28 or 2017 has eight. Okay, see, that, and that's what I say. Ten is an exaggeration, but it gets your point across because it is a lot. <laughs> So we got Wolverine, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. At this point, Fantastic Four 2 is still on the... Fantastic Four 2? Is still on the (laughs) schedule. (laughs) Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Thor Ragnarok, Justice League Part 1, and Bloodshot. But but these are... these are DC and Marvel movies, not just... Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't saying... That's true. And there were more... I think your point... Your on, point was, at least we won't get more than one Star Wars movie. Yes, no, exactly. That is exactly what my point was. It's like, there's only there's not going to be, ten, like, what, eight or ten a year. It's yeah. just one. <laughs> Which, the one, okay, the worry that, the big worry that I have with the Star Wars movies, though, is if they become a regular thing, is so many of the movies that are coming out nowadays like some so many of the big budget movies that are you know the big tent poles, mm-hmm. just feel so forgettable. Meh. They're just like okay, that was a solid movie. It had 
good moments. It had bad moments. It, <laughs> it just didn't has, offend it just has nothing. me. It didn't excite me. There was a rising action. There was a falling action. <laughs> it was a movie. But it has okay. nothing special in it. Yeah, and like, oh, okay. This is just, okay, so I watched Jurassic World this week, and you have no idea how excited I was for the one shot that had animatronics in it. The single shot that had animatronics in it. I didn't even notice it. Yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, I was looking for it. <laughs> what, what, yeah. <laughs> you're just in the movie theater, you're just like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Is there it, it is! is that it? Oh, it was even more beautiful than I imagined! Well, I mean, the trailers kind of give this bit away, but there's a part where there's a bunch of dead Brachiosauruses or whatever, and it's the part where it's the part in Jurassic World that parallels the the sick Triceratops in Jurassic Park, where they're just yeah. kind of like hanging out with the head of this Brachiosaurus, and it's a just severed so head. It's just bleeding that head everywhere. was uh, an animatronic. I like ninety percent. No. it was an animatronic. <laughs> And what's what's the actual name? I know Brachiosaurus was the, Bronto. the name. Brontosaurus. Bra- Bron- wait, Brachiosaurus. Wait. Bron- oh no! Am I screwing up my dinosaurs? <laughs> wait, I don't know what the difference between a Brachiosaurus and a Brontosaurus is. Well, Apparently one has they're both a long like neck long neck. No, both of them. One do. has a long neck. Wait, was wait was one of yeah, these the one if that they had both? Then one does. <laughs> Logically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the brontosaurus that was that was misnamed. Yeah, except now they think it might not have been. Really? Yep. <sighs> oh, Alien dinosaurs are, are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just as a quick Controversial rundown, opinion from one of the creators of Velocicraft. <laughs> <laughs> so as a quick rundown for all the superhero movies that are listed as as 